वेलकम टू ऑनलाइन लेक्चर सीरीज ऑर्गेनाइज बाय डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग एस एन टी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड रिसर्च सेंटर एवला टूडेपिक इज सब टूडे सब्जेक्ट इज कंप्यूटर एड एंड इंजीनियरिंग एंड द टॉपिक्स आर एलिमेंट टाइप्स कोऑर्डिनेट सिस्टम्स एंड शेप फंक्शंस ही आर द टॉपिक्स कवर्ड इन दिस लेक्चर द पॉइंट वन एलिमेंट टाइप्स वे हैव कवर्ड मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स यूज इन फाइनाइट एलिमेंट एनालिसिस फॉर एग्जाम्पल वन डायमेंशनल बार एलिमेंट टू डायमेंशनल बार एलिमेंट एंड थ्री डायमेंशनल बार एलिमेंट Similarly, triangular and quadratic elements have been explained in this lecture, as well as quadrilateral element and hexagonal tetrahedral elements, and also the different elements which are required for finite element analysis has been explained in this lecture. The next second topic is coordinate systems. We know that lot of coordinate systems are used in the finite element analysis, including global coordinate system. लोकल कोऑर्डिनेट सिस्टम एंड नेचुरल कोऑर्डिनेट सिस्टम टॉपिक थ्री शेप फंक्शंस एंड देयर प्रॉपर्टीज शेप फंक्शंस आर दोज फंक्शंस व्हिच आर यूज्ड टू फाइंड आउट द फील्ड वेरिएबल्स और अननोन वेरिएबल्स इन द फाइनाइट एलिमेंट एनालिसिस एट दैट मोर्स पॉइंट वी हैव टू डिस्कस इन दिस लेक्चर ओके एलिमेंट टाइप्स द फर्स्ट एलिमेंट इज वन डायमेंशनल बार एलिमेंट the figures in the middle shows that schematic representation of the bar element so point 1 determine determines one dimensional or linear bar element it is represented by line element having two number of nodes at start and end so the two there are two degrees of freedom for the element similarly for three noded bar element or it is also seen that quadratic bar element it has three number of nodes at start end and middle of the element and therefore number of degrees of freedom are three and third is the four noded bar element if the number of nodes is increase in the middle then there are four nodes and degrees of freedom will be increased and uh, for four noded bar element degrees of freedom is equal to four similarly the beam element has been shown by line diagram in the middle figure it has number of nodes equal to 2 but there are four degrees of freedom two are the translational or displacement and two are the rotations yeah. the figure shows the different element types of bar element the left hand side figure shows the line element or we know and that was the first one in bar element or first dimensional bar element or it is also known as linear bar element it is of order 1 number of nodes are 2 and degrees of freedom are 2 the middle figure shows two dimensional bar element having number of order of 2 and nodes are 2 with two degrees of freedom each at each node therefore total degrees of freedom are 4 similarly the right side figure shows 3d bar element having of order 3 and two nodes at each node there are three degrees of freedom therefore total degrees of freedom are 6 triangular element this is the one of the type of triangular shape element it is denoted on the left hand side figure and three noded triangular or linear triangular or cst element constant strain triangular element to show that strain in the element is constant throughout the analysis therefore it is also known as constant strain triangular element it is of order 2 and there are three number of nodes in the triangular shape therefore they have total degrees of freedom equal to 6 the figures on the right side show that quadratic triangular element or six noded triangular element there are six nodes available in the triangular element each node is associated with two degrees of freedom therefore total degrees of freedom are 12 the figure shows quadrilateral elements the left side figure shows quadrilateral or four uh, four element quad four linear quadrilateral element 
having number of nodes equal to 4 it is of order 2 and each node is associated with 2 degrees of freedom therefore total degrees of freedom equal to 8 the figure in the right side shows quad 9 element or it is also known as quadratic quadrilateral element it is of order 2 it have number of nodes equal to 9 and each node is associated with 2 degrees of freedom therefore total degrees of freedom is equal to 18 then next element shows hexahedral element it is also known as linear hexahedral element or brick element the figures in the left hand side shows a typical example of brick element it is of order 3 number of nodes are equal to 8 and each node is associated with 3 degrees of freedom therefore total degrees of freedom is equal to 24 the figure in the right side shows quadratic hexahedral element it has number of nodes equal to 20 it is of order 3 and each node is associated with 3 degrees of freedom therefore total degrees of freedom is equal to 60 next elements are tetrahedral elements the figure in the left side shows linear tetrahedral element or four noded tetrahedral element. It is of order 3 and having four number of nodes. Each node is associated with three degrees of freedom. Therefore, total degrees of freedom is equal to 12. The figure in the right side shows quadratic tetrahedral element. It is of order 3. It has 10 nodes on 10 nodes and each node is associated with 3 degrees of freedom therefore total degrees of freedom is equal to 30 in finite element analysis there are some cases where we require prismatic element it is of prism shape the, the elements are shown in the figure the left side figure shows linear prism element it is of order 3 it has a number of nodes equal to 6 and each node is associated with 3 degrees of freedom Therefore, total degrees of freedom is equal to 18. The figures in the right side shows quadratic prism element. It is of order 3 and the number of nodes associated with this element are 15. Each node is associated with 3 degrees of freedom. Therefore, total degrees of freedom are 45. In certain cases like shale, cylinder, pressure vessels, we required some axisymmetric elements which are symmetric about certain axis. We have shown here two axisymmetric elements. The figure in the left side shows one dimensional axisymmetric shell element while the figure in the right side shows two dimensional axisymmetric or it is also called as toroidal element. These elements are used for the analysis of pressure vessels, cylindrical parts and surfaces. Also, in case of finite element analysis, may be possible certain in case uh, they are design or in case of bodies, there are fillets or chamfers. The fillets are pro provided, then there is, if we select the triangular elements, then the solution is certain different as compared to the exact. So, for exact solution, a curve element has been established in latest versions of finite element analysis for getting the accurate results the curve elements includes the shown in the figure for example curve line elements plane triangle with curve sides it has six number of nodes annular element which is in curve shape with four four number of nodes tetrahedron element with curve side it has tetrahedron shape in case of curve with 10 number of nodes hexahedron element with curve sides it has curve sides and its shape is hexahedron type having 18 number of nodes 20 number of nodes axisymmetric ring element with curved triangular section it has 6 number of nodes with axisymmetric curve generally these are used for the shell elements then next is the rectangular shell element truncated conical shell element and doubly curved triangle these are the certain curve elements that are also may possible to use in a finite element analysis then we discuss about the coordinate system 
coordinate system is classified into three main category global coordinate system local coordinate system and natural coordinate system when the complete body is specified from the certain frame of reference then it is known as global coordinate system or the you know, x1 and x2 presented in the figure shows the global coordinates of the system or global coordinates of the body the nodes two nodes one two has been shown in the figure and the x1 is the position of node one from the frame of reference it may be origin or we can take that frame of reference at any point to specify the coordinate from the that reference to the body similarly local coordinate system is just used for the element system it is the uh, considered by considering one of the node as a origin here in middle figure we are saying two nodes are there one and two while the node one is considered as a origin and node two is the another direction of the axis where x1 is equal to 0 and x2 will be have certain value which is equal to the length of that element similarly natural coordinate system is the coordinate system which is represented by certain dimensionless number epsilon where the two nodes are shown in the figure of bottom at node 1 epsilon is equal to minus 1 while at node 2 epsilon is equal to plus 1 the natural system natural coordinate system also valid from minus 1 to plus 1 minus 1 at node 1 to plus 1 at node 2 this is known as natural coordinate system then shape functions shape functions also called as interpolation function which are used to interpolate the variables at nodes to the field variables with the application of these shape functions we can establish the relation between nodal variable that is nodal point displacement and the field variable that is element displacement mathematically it can be written as shape function is equal to sum of u n or mathematically it can be said that the displacement variable will be equal to sum of product of shape function and nodal displacement here u is the field variable n is the shape function and q is the nodal variables there are certain properties of such shape functions these are listed and presented in the screen property 1 each shape function has a value of unity at its own node and zero at the other nodes means if you have line element with two nodes the shape function n1 has one value at first node and zero at the another node similarly the shape function n2 has one value unit value at node 2 and zero at node 1 the property to sum of all shape function of an element at any point should be equal to 1 that means number of shape functions in the line element uh, are 2 therefore sum of n1 plus n2 will be equal to 1 at any point property 3 shape functions are always polynomials of the same degree as that of original displacement function of an element if the displacement function is explained by polynomial then shape functions are always polynomials of the same degree as a displacement function and then fourth property the derivative of shape function is constant for two noted bar element if we consider one dimensional bar element is having two nodes then derivative of their shape functions is always constant Okay, thank you.